Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Differential Probes. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical introduction to the differential voltage probes commonly used with oscilloscopes. Common mode rejection ratio, or CMRR, is an important figure of merit for differential probes. We'll cover CMRR briefly in this presentation, but please see the separate presentation, Understanding Common Mode Rejection Ratio, if you'd like to learn more about this important topic. Let's start by explaining so-called single-ended measurements. The standard passive probes commonly used with oscilloscopes are single-ended, in that they measure voltage between the probe tip and ground. A special ground lead is used for attaching the ground connection. This is commonly a wire with an attached alligator-style clip, but may also be a spring-style coil attached near the probe tip. In most scopes, this ground lead is electrically connected to the electrical or chassis ground of the scope and is also shared across all oscilloscope channels. It's important to remember that when this ground lead is attached to a point in the circuit, that point is forced to ground. One potentially undesirable consequence of this is that excessive current can flow through this ground connection, leading to incorrect results and damage to the circuit and or damage to the scope. At high enough current levels, this unintentional connection to ground can even be a safety hazard to the human operator of an oscilloscope. It is, however, sometimes necessary to measure voltage between two points where neither point is ground, and this is referred to as a differential measurement. One very common application of differential measurements is measuring the high voltages across power transistors. Another very common application is measuring differential signals, such as USB, CAN, etc. Differential signaling, or encoding, conveys information by using the difference between two voltages, and thus has a much higher immunity to noise than single-ended signals. One additional area where differential measurements are useful is where a nominal ground exists but is noisy or unstable. There are two ways to measure differential voltages. The first is using a pair of single-ended probes. This is often referred to as the quasi-differential approach. The second method is using a special differential probe that's specifically designed to make differential measurements. Let's start by looking at the quasi-differential method. In the quasi-differential method, two single-ended probes are used to acquire the high and low voltage sides of a signal. It's important to note that each of these two probes still has a connection to ground. The scope's math function is then used to subtract one channel from another in order to obtain the differential voltage between the points. The biggest advantage of this method is that common passive probes can often be used, although this also means that two scope channels are required for each differential measurement. For best accuracy, it's also important that the probes be well matched. That is, both probes should be the same type and model, they should have the same cable or path lengths, and the ground lead length and ground connection should also be the same for both probes. But the preferred way of making differential measurements is using a differential probe. This type of probe has two inputs that can be connected anywhere in the circuit, and neither of these two points needs to be ground. Differential probes are constructed using an internal differential amplifier and produce an output voltage that corresponds to the difference in voltage between the measurement points. This voltage is normally scaled by a known or selectable attenuation factor. Ideally, a differential probe will not respond to so-called common mode signals, that is, signals that are identically present at both measurement points. This makes differential probes a good choice when measuring low-level signals in the presence of noise. And finally, a differential probe can also be used to make a single-ended measurement simply by connecting one of the leads to ground. Let's pause here for a moment to discuss why differential probe leads are often twisted together. Differential probe leads should be kept as short as possible to reduce the pickup of common mode noise, but most differential probes come with rather long leads. These leads are often twisted together to help minimize the pickup of external noise. This twisting of the leads does however increase the capacitive loading of the probe, and therefore the leads of a differential probe should be left untwisted if it's important to keep the probe's capacitive loading to a minimum. 
there are both advantages and disadvantages to using differential probes. The advantages include that only a single oscilloscope channel is needed for a differential measurement. And, as mentioned earlier, differential probes can also be used for single-ended measurements. Differential probes are safer for both devices and humans, especially in higher voltage environments. And, differential probes also have higher common mode rejection ratio, something we'll cover in more detail in just a few moments. Some of the disadvantages of differential probes are that they're considerably more expensive than passive single-ended probes, and they're also physically larger. Finally, due to the differential amplifier used to compare the voltages, differential probes are active, that is, they require power. In addition to typical probe specifications, such as bandwidth and attenuation, there are three important special considerations when using differential probes. These are common mode rejection ratio, differential mode range, and common mode range. Before we end this presentation, let's take a brief look at each of these specifications. An ideal differential amplifier should reject or suppress non-differential or common mode signals that appear identically on the amplifier inputs. In practice, these common mode signals are usually noise or an offset. This ability to reject common mode signals is quantified as the common mode rejection ratio, or CMRR, and is defined as the ratio of the differential mode gain to the common mode gain. Since the ideal common mode gain is zero, the ideal CMRR is infinite, but most differential probes have a CMRR of about 30 to 80 dB, with higher values being more desirable. Note too that CMRR normally degrades with frequency. As mentioned earlier, one of the advantages of differential probes is that they have a much higher CMRR than can be achieved using the quasi-differential approach. Please see the separate presentation, Understanding Common Mode Rejection Ratio, if you'd like to learn more about CMRR. A related specification is differential mode range, which is the maximum allowable voltage between the two amplifier inputs. This value is generally symmetric with respect to polarity, that is, it's the same from plus to minus and from minus to plus. Because it's important to know the maximum measurable differential voltage, this value is usually printed directly on the probe body itself. Note that this value also depends on the probe's attenuation settings. Here, if the differential probe attenuation is set to 20, DMR is only 140 volts but increases to 1400 volts when attenuation is increased to 200. It's usually easy to detect when DMR is being exceeded, since the differential signal is what's being displayed on the oscilloscope. Typical signs of exceeding the maximum range are clipping or distortion of the measured signal. In addition, some modern differential probes will also have a visual overrange indicator on the probe body itself. The third special differential mode parameter we'll look at is common mode range, which is the maximum voltage between each individual probe input and ground. Like DMR, this value is usually symmetrical. And like DMR, this is often also printed directly on the probe itself. Note however that unlike DMR, CMR does not change with input attenuation. It can also be difficult to know if the common mode range is being exceeded, since the voltage between a single input and ground is not directly seen on the scope. Momentarily disabling one input and connecting to ground is one way to detect when CMR is being exceeded. And, as in the case of DMR, some modern differential probes have a visual indicator on the probe body itself, which shows when the common mode range is being exceeded on one or both inputs. Let's end with a brief summary. A single-ended measurement is one that's referenced to ground, whereas a differential measurement is made between two points, neither of which is, necessarily, ground. Some common examples of differential measurements are measurements made across power transistors and measurements of differentially signaled protocols, such as USB or CAN. There are two ways of making differential measurements. The quasi-differential approach uses two single-ended probes, each attached to ground, 
and the scopes math function is used to subtract the two measured voltages. Another way is using a differential probe as described in this presentation. In almost all cases, a differential probe is the preferred method of making differential voltage measurements. And finally, in addition to typical probe specifications, Differential probe specifications also include things like common mode rejection ratio, differential mode range, and common mode range. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Differential Probes. If you'd like to learn more about oscilloscope probes, differential measurements, or other oscilloscope-related topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.